Hello everyone. In a response spectrum analysis, we first obtain the individual model response to an input response spectrum. Let's say that we have obtained 20 modes of a given structure. This means that we have 20 responses. Note that we only have the model response, but no phase information. So have you ever wondered how the peak response for the structure is estimated? The concept of mode combination methods comes into picture here, where the selected method is used to approximate the maximum response of the structure. In this video, we'll discuss the different mode combination methods available in ANSYS Mechanical, their formulations and usage, along with their applications, followed by a walkthrough example to help you select the appropriate method. Ready? Let's get started! To conduct a response spectrum analysis of a structure, we first need to obtain model results, including the frequencies, mode shapes, and the participation factors of each mode. With the given input response spectrum, we can find the mode coefficient for each mode, which is denoted by AI. Note that the subscript I indicates that the mode coefficient is found for each mode. Knowing the mode coefficient, frequency, and mode shape we can then calculate the response of each mode. Now we have n sets of response, depending on how many modes we calculate for the structure. Our goal in response spectrum analysis is to approximate the peak response of the structure. Unfortunately, we don't have phase information, so we can't directly add the modes together. So our next step is to find another way to combine these modal contributions. There are multiple mode combination methods that have been developed for response spectrum analysis, but most of them evolved from one general equation. In this general form, we're looking at a linear combination of the product of mode pairs Ri and Rj, and the square root of this value is taken. Note that i and j can be different or can be the same mode number. Epsilon is a number between 0 to 1, and we call it the mode combination coefficient or coupling coefficient. It decides the degree at which the two modes are correlated with each other. If epsilon is zero, then the term RIRJ becomes zero and it doesn't contribute to the combined response. On the other hand, if epsilon is one, the entire product RIRJ are added in the combined response. Use a simple example may give a better explanation here. So you only have two mode responses, R1 and R2, then the total response can be fully written as this. The first two terms can be thought of as the individual contributions of modes one and two, while the latter two terms can be considered as the interaction between modes one and two. If we define epsilon one two and epsilon two one to be zero, then the coupled terms are removed in the response Ra. We may ask ourselves, when should we consider the coupling effect of two modes in mode combination? It all depends on the distance between the two modes. And when we say distance, we mean the frequency difference between the two modes. If the frequencies of two neighboring modes are very close to each other, we call them closely spaced modes. You might ask now, how close is closely spaced? Actually, there's no hard rule, but a guideline, especially for seismic application, is when the damping ratio is less than 2%, modes may be considered closely spaced if the frequency are within 10% of each other. If there's no closely spaced modes for structure, we can neglect the dependency between the modes. This means we can remove the coupled terms in the mode combination equation. And this leads to a simplified expression. We call it SRSS method. Basically, it's the square root sum of the squares of each mode. Now, if we have two mode responses, R1 and R2, by SRSS, the total response will be quite straightforward. On the other side, if there are closely spaced modes for structure, we may consider using a mode combination method that can take the coupling effect into account in the total response. In ANSYS Mechanical, there are two available methods, Rosenbluth's methods and complete quadratic combination method. Let's check Rosenbluth's method first. 
the Rosenblum method does not change the general equation for mode combination. It just defines how the coupling coefficient should be calculated. We don't need to remember exactly the expression of coupling coefficient here, but we can try to understand it. Here, omega i and omega j represents natural frequencies of modal i and j. Cosi prime is related to the modified damping ratio. So if the frequencies of two modes are very close to each other, this term tends to be zero, and the coupling coefficient will approach to one. On the other hand, if the difference of the frequencies is extremely large, the denominator tends to be infinite, and the coupling coefficient epsilon will approach zero, meaning little or no coupling effect will be considered. Note that Cosi prime here is modified damping ratio. For Rosenblum's method, even when we specify zero damping for the structure, there is an internally calculated damping included in the mode combination. Now, let's move to the complete quadratic combination method. We'll just call it CQC method. This method takes a slightly different format. First of all, there's an absolute bracket to make sure that the term under the square root is positive. And the coefficient k is 1 for i equals to j and 2 for i does not equal to j. The definition of coupling coefficient epsilon is a little bit complicated here. But we don't need to worry about it too much. ANSYS calculates the coefficient automatically for us. Although it cannot be directly read from the expression, this epsilon definition also approaches unity when the modes are closely spaced and becomes zero when they are sufficiently spaced. Also note that for the CQC method, damping is required. Both CQC method and Rosenblum's method originated from seismic applications. Now let's go to a workshop model to check how mode combination methods is specified and how different methods affect the results. In this demo, we'll use a simplified tower with two eccentric masses to compare different mode combination methods for response spectrum analysis. The simplified geometry is for demonstration purpose only. Now let's open the archived ANSYS workbench file of the simplified tower. The project is already set up to perform the model analysis. We can expand the branches in the project tree to become familiar with the model setup. The tower structure is represented with line bodies. These line bodies are already matched with beam elements. The beam elements have been assigned cross-sectional properties. Material properties of all beams are assigned with linear elastic structural steel. Two eccentric distributed masses have been scoped to the tower beams and assigned a mass to represent a specific design load for the tower. Expanding the model branch, we see that the tower is fixed at the bottom to the ground. The model has already been set up to solve for the first 160 modes. Now we can solve the model analysis. Since in this case, we know our input spectrum is given in x direction, so we'll check the frequencies and participation factors in x direction. Let's go to solution information, solution output, change it to participation factor summary. We can see that the frequency results include some closely spaced modes with relatively large participation factors. With model results obtained, then we will run the response spectral analysis with SRSS and Rosenblum's method, respectively. For Rosenblum's method, we'll run the model with and without damping. Now go to Workbench, drag and drop a response spectrum analysis system over to solution cell of the model analysis. And rename system B to SRSS. Go back to mechanical window. Go to analysis setting of system B. Choose SRSS for mode combination method. Note that SRSS doesn't use any damping input. Now we'll apply a response spectrum acceleration load. Right click over the response spectrum B, insert RS acceleration, change boundary condition to all supports and direction to x axis. 
we will use the seismic data as input spectrum. Copy the spectral data and paste it into the tabular data. Now we can solve the analysis. Insert total deformation and directional deformation for x, y, and z direction and evaluate all results. Here, notice that the contour plot does not show a deformed shape. Since the values are always positive from a response spectral analysis, it will be misleading to show a deformed shape on such values. We will set up another two scenarios, Rosen blues without damping and with 2% damping. Let's go back to Workbench, duplicate system B twice. Click yes for the prompt to keep the upstream connections. Now rename the newly created system C to Rosenblues and system D to Rosenblues 2% damping. Let's go to analysis settings of system C, choose Rosenblues for most combination method and do the same thing for system D. But here, we put 0 0.02 for the damping ratio in damping control. Now, we can solve analysis C and D. Let's compare the results from these three different scenarios. For total deformation, there is small differences between SRSS and Rosenblues without damping. Rosenblues with 2% damping shows obvious difference from the other two cases. For directional deformation in the excitation direction, the X direction, Rosenblues predicts higher deformation than SRSS. For Y and Z deformations, Rosenblues method shows lower deformation compared with SRSS. Here, SRSS may overpredict response since it seems unintuitive that deformation in the Z direction would be larger than the X direction, which is the excited direction. Rosenblues considered the interaction between closely spaced modes. The total estimated response is lower since closed modes may interact in such a way to negate effects due to sign of modes. In the solver output, we can check modal combination coefficients. Since we require 160 modes, solver output file is too large to be shown in mechanical worksheet. So we can open the solver output file located in the solver file directory. If we open solve out file and take the seventh mode of this tower as an example, it is coupled with multiple modes indicated by the coupling coefficient. This is expected because the frequencies of these modes are quite close. This concludes the demo. Now let's summarize what we learned in the video. Once individual responses are available, to estimate a maximum response, these responses need to be combined and analyzed. And this is done with the help of mode combination methods. There are multiple mode combination methods that have been developed for response spectral analysis, but most of them evolved from one general equation. Here, epsilon is the coupling coefficient that considers the interaction of modes, where it can range from zero, indicating no interaction, to a value of one, indicating a strong interaction. In ANSYS Mechanical, Three types of mode combination methods are available, SRSS, CQC, and Rosenblues. The SRSS method does not account for model coupling between different modes, whereas the CQC and Rosenblues methods account for the interaction of modes that are close to each other. I hope that you find this video informative. Don't forget to visit courses.ansys.com to discover more useful courses.